What is it? One, yeah, 165.1. Okay. All right. So the meat didn't really go as planned for myself. Um, you know, training was going well. We were, we were two and a half weeks out. Um, the last heavy squat workout. And with uh, basically my last kind of warm up set, uh, 465, I ended up tearing my quad. And, um, you know, it was frustrating because it was one of those things where I had the idea for this documentary to be this big comeback and having these injuries and stuff. And then, you know, coming back on the platform and pulling over 700, and, you know, benching 400 and all this stuff. And uh, it wasn't, it just wasn't going to happen now. So immediately my focus uh, kind of shifted to coaching. Um, now at the same time, I, uh, I had gotten PRP injection. The goal was to get my leg as good as I could to be able to still go to the competition and do what I could. Um, again, I was there to coach Nico, but I figured, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna be there, so let's, let's do what I can. I wasn't gonna squat, I was just gonna take an empty bar squat because I still had to do the three lifts. Uh, they didn't have a push-pull division. As I was going down and in the descent, my quad retour. About an hour later, my leg started to get tight and sort of seize up and uh, I really, I couldn't bend my leg. That basically meant my deadlifts were done. Um, but I still went and I benched and I opened with, I think it was 320. Um, I hit it easy, um, but because I had no leg drive and my previous pec tear, I just felt like, you know what, I'm gonna do more damage um, than it's worth. So. I pulled out of the competition, I didn't deadlift, uh, but again, I was there for Nico, so instantly my focus switched to let's get him going through the meet and let's get him to basically win. Uh, what do we have to do to, to coach him through this meet and set his records and, and win the meet, um, which he ultimately did. The idea for this documentary started out, like I said, as this big comeback. Uh, you know, it had been five years since I had been uh, in competition and uh, previously I had competed at the World Championships and won the Nationals and everything, USA Nationals I competed at. So I'd done some big meets and uh, this was uh, supposed to be, again, the big comeback where I hit some big lifts. But, you know, kind of the whole theme of the documentary now is that shit happens and and life happens and uh unfortunately for me yeah i ended up tearing my quad two and a half weeks out and uh you know previously i i would have gotten really down and been upset and been mad and you know angry and all that but i think at this point i've i've done a lot of competition and i just shifted my focus into coaching um and when I came, I came back from the competition, it was just right back to, to work and business and family, enjoying the rest of summer. Um, you know, it, it's been two months since we started this documentary and it's funny how just like in life, things don't always go to plan. And, uh, and essentially that's what happened here. The community that we have here, people checking in saying, hey man, how's the quad? Um, what happened at the meet? Hey, we did see you didn't deadlift, like people, taking an interest um, and you know I think even with this documentary when me and Emily talked about doing it it was kind of like oh well, who's gonna watch it you know who who who's gonna be interested in this and the feedback that we got has been amazing people coming in who I haven't seen in a couple months and they come in to, to train one day and they say hey man we've been watching the documentary it's been awesome um, or even the messages that Emily's gotten after the third episode there about how she reacts to some of the things that I choose to do and and how it's helped them understand how to be better in their relationships and um, yeah I think just generally 
What we've built here, I'm very thankful for. It hasn't been easy by any means. It's like the 10 years, uh, the overnight success that took 10 years. We have so many things to worry about. And my and if anybody knows me, I am a worrier, but I listen to my mom who always says, we cannot worry about tomorrow. We just can't, we can't, we have to be here. We have to be here. And that takes practice, a lot of practice. I could always count on Dan for being positive and just always like making us feel safe here. Um, knowing that everything's gonna be all right if we like stick together as a team. And that's what helped me through all this kind of COVID stuff and, and like lockdowns is I had him there and it was never like, oh, it's like, it's never gonna get better. It's like, no, we just go day by day. And that's how he goes with like training. It's like one day at a time. Um, if this day sucks, tomorrow's another day. It was never, you know, negative mindset. And I think, you know, being a, being a positive person, even through it all is something that just by him doing it, he doesn't have to do much more. He's been through all of it and he has this strong kind of mindset that's positive and that just is like contagious to everyone else. Not even just injuries, but setbacks in life are gonna happen at various points throughout your life. We all experience it. It could be the loss of a, a family member or a pet. Um, it could be the loss of a job. It could be a car accident and you, you know, you hurt your neck or something. You have to have the same mindset as when you're preparing for a competition, you have to lay out a plan. Realize that it's temporary and not have a mindset of giving up. You lay out that plan, you go through those hard times, you go through those dark days. After I tore my pack, I remember watching a YouTube video and thinking, I'm never gonna be able to do chest flies again. It was a guy doing pec deck and it was like, it was, it was hard. It was, I went from being an athlete benching 415, 420 pounds to not even being able to open a can of food for my dog. It was really mentally challenging. When the gym was closed for a long time and we had a baby and we were in debt, which we still are, I saw Dan struggle more mentally than I ever did physically since I've met him. We didn't know what tomorrow was gonna bring. We didn't know if the, if the gym would even be around. I strongly, believe that our outlook together as a team helped us get through that and will help us get through anything else. As long as we put the practice into that mindset that we need to stay present, we need to be here and do our best today. When I look back at my mentality for training and competing and all these things, um, I still have the same mentality that I had right from when I was 19 years old, you know, doing my first big competition uh, where it's like, you know, you, you lay out a plan and you execute that plan being the training program. So week one, you hit these numbers, week two, you hit these numbers, no matter how you feel, you have to hit those numbers if you want to be successful on the day. And I think that I've, learn to use that in other aspects of my life too so uh, with the gym if we find that one area of the gym or one aspect of the business we work backwards we say what's the goal that we need to hit we put a timeline on it and work backwards from that the mindset that i have uh, that i've had and that i've i've used in powerlifting is successful i'm using it now in business. Powerlifting used to be the number one thing. I'm obsessed, it's in me, I can't I can't change that. But now my family is the number one thing. Powerlifting and the gym, they kind of flip flop. Obviously you can't compete all the time. Maybe you compete twice a year, let's say. I'm thankful we have a great team now. I wouldn't have been able to put the same effort into this competition if it wasn't for the people that we have on the team now, the, the, the staff. Now that we have a huge team, he's like helping everybody out and I see where people are and I think back to when I was there and then I see them grow with like under under Dan's help and uh, under his kind of watch and he's just always there to help like he wants to see people grow the first writing that we had on the wall was right in front of the squat rack and it said don't be average and every time that we were doing a heavy set this is in like the early days of the gym you know 2013 2014 like 10 years ago um, there, that was the only thing on the wall was that saying and when you're pushing through a set and you're getting ready for a competition average if you if you stop just short of 
what your goal was for that day or you don't push that extra bit, you're gonna end up being average. And average is gonna get you second or third place. So it was always in my mind, don't be average. Do that one more rep, add those extra pounds and win first place. For me, I'm a very competitive person and uh, I just, I never, I never wanted to show up to something, to a competition just for the sake of doing it. Now, my mindset's a bit different now because of what's happened, but I, I always had the mindset of going in to win. I never just want to show up and compete. I go to win. And, uh, you know, the other saying on the wall uh, is, uh, there's no substitute for hard work. In my 15 years in the fitness industry, I find people are looking for the secret program or the secret diet, something that's gonna make it easier for them to get to where they wanna be. But at the end of the day, there's only hard work. There's no substitute for hard work. You can take all the steroids in the world, but if you don't work hard, they're not gonna do anything for you. They're just gonna sit in your body. If it's drugs that you're looking to, to replace hard work, not gonna work. A program that you're looking for to replace hard work, not gonna happen. A diet or a, special, a secret food, it's not gonna happen. There's no substitute for hard work.